Hi. In my previous video, I discussed the benefits of using the so-called linear MOSFETs in applications that require the devices to be uh, operating in linear region, such as in electronic loads. And I did a couple of experiments showing a single IXTK90N25L2 MOSFET dissipating at least 150 watts. And as I mentioned, the heat sink I used, while quite large, is not that efficient. The first thing is that the surface is not as smooth as I had liked. And also being an aluminum heat sink, the thermal resistance is inherently higher than that of copper. And a few readers suggested that I add fans to blow across the fins to dissipate more heat. Well, as you can see here, I did have fans at the back. I just simply didn't use them because given the thermal resistance, the chip was already at a very high temperature while the heat sink was still cold. So in this scenario, the fans wouldn't really help anyway. So this time around, I did a few things differently. First, I didn't bother putting a mica film behind the MOSFET. Originally, I used a very thin mica film to isolate the drain, but although that film was very thin, it is likely it added a little bit of thermal resistance. Since I wanted to squeeze out as much, as, uh, as much performance as possible from the, this MOSFET, I simply just removed it this time. Secondly, I also sanded down the top of the aluminum sink with 200, uh, 2000 grit sandpaper using a surface sander. And it is rather smooth now, so I think this would help the thermal performance this time. And lastly, I put a copper block between the MOSFET and the heatsink, with thermal compound applied between. So, hopefully, this will improve the thermal transfer, as a large surface area of the copper will likely dissipate heat transfer into the aluminum heatsink. With these modifications in mind, let's redo a couple of experiments and see how much power we can dissipate with this setup. So without further ado, let's uh, take a look at the uh, experiment. And uh, if you haven't looked at the experiments in my previous video, I would strongly recommend that you take a look so that you can understand uh, what the setup here is. But anyway, so let's uh, take a look at uh, setting the power supply to 15 volts. As, so this is as a benchmark because that's the power supply voltage we set last time. And let's gradually increase the current so that we have um, roughly 14 millivolts voltage drop across that 75 millivolts 50 amp current shunt. So that would be roughly um, 9.5 amps. Okay, so let's start. So 11, 14, oh, so again too high, sorry about that. So let's take a look again. Okay, so now we have uh, 14 millivolts. And uh, let's take a look at what the temperature re reading right now is, okay? It's 19, 28, 35, and that's about it. So if you recall last time actually when we were dissipating uh, this much heat, uh, this much power, the temperature rose almost to 90 degrees. So this time certainly is a lot more efficient. Let's start increasing the uh, voltage, see how much more power we can dissipate. And uh, let's uh, take a look. 180 So we're right now 71 degrees, 72 degrees, okay? 
So that's actually still pretty good. So I think we can still push a little bit more. So now let me uh, increase that to 20 volts. Now you can see that I have increased power supply voltage to 20 volts. And the current is still at about uh, 9.5 amps. So now let's take a look at the temperature measurement. And I think right now it would be on par with what we had last time. So 53, 59. 61. Yeah, sorry about that. 76. Eighty-seven. Okay. So it looks like we can definitely dissipate two hundred watts using a single MOSFET, and uh, it definitely uh, with the all copper heat sink design. I think you can even push out maybe ten or twenty watts more, and uh, perhaps with better thermal compound, you can definitely. Uh, do let's say 250 watts with no problem so let me uh, turn down the, the current now I think this experiment definitely showed that a single uh, excess linear MOSFET can dissipate at least 200 watts and uh, you can use a couple of those to make a very hefty electronic loads if you want to so anyway, so now we know what an efficient heat sink can do, uh, can improve the performance of this uh, linear load. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will catch up with you next time.